I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzymental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to talk to you about one of the most effective herbs for preventing and treating colds and upper respiratory infections, and that is elderberry. So elderberry comes from the elder tree, which is native to Europe, and elder is especially common in England. Most of the time people think of the berries as what's used for cold and flu, many parts of the tree are used in herbal medicine, including beyond the berries, the bark, the dried roots, and the fresh leaves also. Elderberry stimulates the immune system and has shown some activity in preliminary trials against viruses. Most commonly, elderberry is used internally as a remedy for cold and fever, and people often use the flower of the elderberry plant, or elderflower, as a gargling mixture for respiratory disorders like coughs and head colds. So elderberry contains substances that disarm the neuraminidase enzyme of flu viruses, which prevents them from penetrating healthy cells. It's been shown to be effective against eight strains of flu virus. Vaccines are usually only effective against one or maybe two. Once infected, elderberry has been shown to speed recovery by as many as three days. Elderberry also relieves nasal congestion, fever, and even sore throat. Israeli virologist Dr. Madeline Mumukagalu is credited for discovering the mechanism of action of elderberry extract on cold and flu. So the flu is triggered by any one of a family of viruses known as myoxoviruses influenzae, and there are three types, A, B, and C, of which A and B are the most common, with the type A virus being the most epidemic in nature and the most mutative also. A virus does not have the ability to replicate itself, and in order to do this, it must invade existing living cells, which alters the function of the cells consequently. The mechanism whereby a virus actually enters the cell is through tiny spikes known as hemagglutinin on the surface of the virus that punctures the wall of the cell. So what this means, according to Dr. Mumukagalu, is that if you stop the virus from entering the cell, you defeated the disease. Dr. Mumukagalu discovered that the active ingredients in elderberries actually disarm the hemagglutinin by binding to them, which effectively prevents the piercing of the cellular membranes. The viral spikes are covered with that enzyme I just mentioned before called neuraminidase, and this enzyme acts to break down the cell wall. So bioflavonoids, which are also present in high concentration in elderberries, help to inhibit the action of this enzyme. Elderberry is also very good at treating eczema and other skin disorders and also reducing pain and inflammation over time. It's even helpful for patients with diabetes as it actually fosters increased glucose uptake out of the blood into the tissues. Elderberry comes in a variety of forms. You can get it as capsules or chewables or liquid. And the daily dose can be anywhere from 10 to 15 grams. The side effects with elderberry use are really minimal, but they often include things like dizziness, headache, convulsions, and rapid heartbeat. But this is rare. And of course, large doses of elderberry juice can also cause uncontrollable diarrhea. So if you are doing it as liquid, try doing a more moderate dose. The one part of the plant that you should avoid is the stem of the elderberry plant, as it actually contains a large amount of natural cyanide. But the berries themselves, which are the most commonly used form for the immune system, don't have any cyanide at all, so they're safe. And the only real final caution with elderberry is that elderberry should not be used by patients who have low blood iron, as the herb seems to form a complex with iron, which may become toxic in the blood. So if you have unnaturally low iron stores in the blood, elderberry really is not for you. But beyond that, elderberry can be one of the best herbs you can take during cold and flu season, and it's one of the most readily available ones also. It has a lightly bitter taste to it, so you might need to sweeten it up a little bit, but it's definitely something you want to keep with you during winter time. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.